Welcome and good morning everyone to Tri-County Healthcare. The reason we're here today, as you all know, that April is Donate Life Month. This flag raising event is part of a national initiative, Flags Across America, to honor and celebrate the hundreds of thousands of donors and recipients whose lives have been affected by organ, eye, and tissue donations. In a few moments here, I'm going to be introducing our, our speakers today. They've got wonderful stories to tell. It includes Steph Larson, yes, our own Steph Larson, heart transplant recipient. Bill Carlson, who was Steph's mentor through her journey, also himself a heart transplant recipient and a life source volunteer. And another of our own, Kim Agard, whose son Tommy was a donor after his passing. But first, a few statistics. Considering the magnitude of the challenge that we've got here in the United States and really across the world, currently there are more than 123,000 men, women, and children who are awaiting organ transplantations to save their lives. Of that, approximately 1,900 are children. Thousands more are in need of tissue and cornea transplants to help restore their mobility and their eyesight. In 2013, there were nearly 29,000 organ transplants done from more than 14,000 donors. Also, more than 47,000 cornea transplants were performed in 2013. And more than a million tissue transplants are done each year, and a surgical need for tissue has been steadily rising. So, now, it's my honor to present the storytelling. First, I'm gonna turn it over to Steph. Steph Larson. I could probably tell this story without my paper, but I think I'll be a little better with it in front of me here today. Uh, good morning, my name is Stephanie Larson, as he said. Uh, three and a half years ago today, uh, I suffered a sudden cardiac arrest while out for an evening with my friends. In other words, my heart stopped working. I could have died that night, but God had other plans for me. I was surrounded by my guardian angels that night. They recognized that I was in trouble, and with the help from others there that night, they stepped up and were able to save my life. It's amazing how something as simple as CPR and the recognition that something is, has gone wrong can have such an impact. I had less than 10 minutes, and my outcome could have been very different. Help began to arrive, including first responders and an AED, another great tool that helps save lives. I was transported back here to Tri-County Hospital by our ambulance, where I was met by all my coworkers. Their knowledge and skills helped sustain my life until I was stable enough to be airlifted to St. Cloud. After realizing, though, that the left side of my heart had failed, I was again airlifted to the U of M, where I had an LVAD placed. This device was to do the work of the left side of my heart, and then I had to realize, though, at that point, that my life had changed forever, and it would never be the same. I was very scared and very angry, and yet I pushed on. My whole family stayed by my side, including my husband, Jesse, and my two children, Aiden and Isabel. After three open heart surgeries, healing both mentally and physically, and learning my new way of life, it was very hard to accept, but they told me I only had a 7% chance that my heart would heal. About six months later, though, I was stable and stronger. It became a reality that I would live my life with the LVAD or be evaluated to be put on the heart transplant list. And my decision was made. It sounds, it was a very simple decision. I would take the new heart. I couldn't imagine living my life dependent on a machine or dependent on others. It then became the sit and wait game. Every time my phone rang, I rushed to answer it, hoping and praying it was the call. I tried going on living life and not thinking about it, but it was very impossible. But yeah, so was not driving and swimming that summer. <laughs> then on September 15th of 2012, I got the call that had changed my life. I thought I was ready and knew what to expect, but until you experience it, you don't realize what it is really like. When they tell you about rejection, you remain optimistic that it'll never happen to you. In my case, I did reject. They opened my chest right there in the room for the fifth time that day and saved my life. Everyone continued their prayers and watched over me. And again, God had plans for me. And eventually my heart did come around. They called it a stunned heart or a shocked heart, which can happen with younger hearts, they said. 
I was relisted during that time, but thankfully I didn't need it. After that, I began on my new road of life. I began to learn new, new medication regimen, what I could and couldn't do, and how my immune system would always be suppressed and my chances of getting sick would be a lot higher. To date, I can say everything has been worth it. I wouldn't trade one moment for what I was given today. Over the last two and a half years, I've learned a lot about organ donation. I've learned how many lives can be saved when a person makes that decision to be that organ donor. I've also received letters from my donor's family. My donor's name is Ben. He was a young man who was very active in sports, physical fitness, riding motorcycles and jet skis. His family was able to share their son with me when he was no longer able to be here physically on this earth. I hope to one day be able to meet them and thank them personally. Through this all, I've had such a great support, including many of you here today. I personally want to thank every one of my Tri-County Hospital employees, staff. You were there in moments I needed you most. The support and love you gave me kept me going, and you never gave up on me. I was also introduced to many volunteers along the way through the hospital down at the U. Many told their stories and many times I may not have listened to them, but over time they kept coming back and I learned so much from them. They have become my friends and can understand me in ways that many individuals can't. I'm proud to have one of them here with me today. Not only does he volunteer for Life Source, but he's also a heart transplant recipient. It's my privilege to you to introduce to you Bill Carlson. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bill Carlson. Uh, I happen to be a uh, volunteer at Life Source. Uh, I've been volunteering at Life Source for approximately five years. I'm also a volunteer at the University of Minnesota where I happen to meet a young lady by the name of Stephanie Larson. I actually met her in the intensive care unit. She doesn't know it, but I actually held her hand a few times. Please don't tell Jesse I did that. Um, I'm married um, to my uh, wife, Naomi. I have three daughters and three grandchildren. I'm not only a volunteer at the hospital, but I began my volunteering career back in 1967 when I joined the United States Navy at the age of 17. I am a combat veteran of Vietnam. I was not diagnosed with any kind of heart failure until 1991, when I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. Now they told me at the time that congestive heart failure is very controllable, but you know at the time I really didn't think doctors knew what they talked about. So I, I took it upon myself to not maybe take all my medicine like I should. That was a bad move, which uh, led to pacemakers and defibrillators and so on and so forth. Um, when I finally realized that these doctors really knew what they were talking about, they hadn't even talked about transplant yet, they were just trying to cure me from this horrible disease. I did not end up in the hospital until um, um, December of 2007. I wasn't feeling very good, so they, they brought me into the hospital. They thought I had pneumonia. So they treated me with this, uh, this wonderful drug called prednisone, which made me feel a lot better, but that's all it does, make me feel better. So I ended up back in the hospital at the end of January in 2007 with failing valves in my left ventricle. It was complicated by arrhythmic angina, also an infection called endocarditis that just about got me. Uh, when, I, when they brought me into the intensive care unit, they had already replaced the valves in my left ventricle. And they had to place me on a machine called a bivad. The bivad is a... Uh, short for a biventricular assisting device. I was sedated for approximately six weeks when they, they took the chance and implanted the Elvad just like Stephanie had. I lived with that for approximately a year. And when I finally got on that list, I had great hopes on, on recovering from this horrible disease. I think that's what organ donation is really about, all about. It's not only me recovering from a horrible disease, but even more so, for me, it's the people that I've met along the way, including Stephanie, Kim. I was transplanted on June 8th of 2009. Uh, I've six years, it's coming June. Everything's been going good with me. Uh, just like Stephanie, I did reject too. Uh, but it's very controllable. And when I speak to upcoming heart transplant patients in the hospital today, I say don't feel that rejection is, is, is 
is the end of it. It's, it's very controllable. So please don't be scared about this rejection thing. <laughs> now, I, I do a lot of things, and I'm very honored to be up here today because uh, this is where my donor is from, Wadena, Minnesota. I've driven through this town many, many times. I used to fish over on Otter Tail Lake and over on Rush Lake. I never knew at the time that this would ever happen to me. So I guess they say things really do happen for a reason. But right now I'd like to introduce uh, someone that I've just met a little over a year ago. I'd like you to introduce uh, Kim Agard, my donor's mother. After hearing both Steph's story and Bill's story, you, you get a little bit of a snapshot of how important is organ donation and how tremendously this has impacted their lives. My name is Kim Agard. My husband is Tom Agard. I've worked at Tri-County Healthcare for, this is my 30th year here, um, and my husband Tom has also worked in the community for the past 30 years as well. Our story is from a very different perspective. In 2009, we lost our son Tommy, and Tommy was an organ donor. Shortly after his death, I received a letter from LifeSource, and I'd like to read it to you. It says, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Agard, please accept our heartfelt sympathy on the death of your son Thomas. There are no words that can diminish the pain of your loss. Our hope is that it may be a source of comfort knowing that other people may live longer, healthier lives because of your son's donation and your compassion for others. <coughs> Excuse me. On behalf of Life Source and those individuals waiting for transplant, I extend my deepest gratitude. Your son's donation celebrates life, Thomas's life, and the lives of those who have been, who have been given a second chance. A 30-year-old man received the gift of one of Thomas's kidneys. This recipient received his transplant in Maryland. A 42-year-old man received the gift of Thomas's other kidney. This recipient is married, lives in Minnesota, and is the father of two. This patient waited for a kidney transplant since June of 2003 and has been taking dialysis treatments since September of 2002. He is doing well, he works in manufacturing, enjoys yard work, and says thank you. Surgeons were able to divide Thomas's liver into two parts enabling a second chance at life to, to be extended to two separate recipients. A 36-year-old woman received the gift of a portion of Thomas's liver. This recipient lives in Minnesota and is the mother of three. This patient had waited for a liver transplant since December of 2008. She works as a secretary in a public school, enjoys spending time with family, and is grateful she is at home and doing well. A 65-year-old woman also received the gift of a portion of Thomas's liver. This recipient is married, lives in Michigan, and is the mother of two. This patient had waited for a liver transplant since June of 2003. A 59-year-old man received the gift of Thomas's heart. This recipient is married, lives in Minnesota, and is a father. This patient had waited for a heart transplant since May of 2009. He's a retired carpenter and enjoys fishing. A 69-year-old man received the gift of Thomas's lungs. This recipient lives in Pennsylvania and is the father of five. He enjoys hunting and fishing and walking. He and his family are very grateful for this generous gift, which is allowing him to become more active and spend time with his grandchildren. Thank you again for helping us to enable your son to give the precious gift of life to others through organ donation. Your son Thomas is truly a hero. The grateful transplant recipients and their families will never forget his invaluable gifts. I hope the information in this letter provides you comfort and peace. Sincerely, Carlene Gilbert, Donation Coordinator. And as Bill said, you know, life is kind of funny sometimes in the way people's paths can cross and the way things can come around full circle. Um, and you think of the series of events that happened since Bill's transplant, he's been a volunteer for Life Source and volunteering at the University of Minnesota to help families navigate a journey very similar to his own. And through that, he met Steph. And Steph has worked here at Tri-County for a number of years 
as a nurse, helping patients every day. She also volunteers for LifeSource, and because of that, I had a chance to meet Bill. Last year, at Tri-County's February Festival of Health, Steph invited Bill, invited Bill to attend. And when Bill volunteers for these events, he always puts out a picture of the young man who donated his heart. And I have to tell you, when I walked by that table last year, I was amazed. And it, it blew me away. Because next, next to a sign that said my donor was a picture of my son. And that's how I got to meet Bill. It was truly an amazing experience to meet the man who had received Tommy's heart. And it's very heartwarming to see the good work that Bill and Stephanie are doing to help others and to educate people on the importance of organ donation. I would like to thank you all for being here with us today to honor those recipients of organ donation, to honor those who are anxiously waiting for new organs, and to honor those who have given the ultimate gift. Thank you. Boy, it's a tough act to follow, those three. You know, you think about the, uh, the week that we're in as we celebrate Holy Week here and the resurrection of uh, Jesus Christ, our Savior. We come to realize that there are resurrections and, and salvations happening every day and many, many moments every day through the great work of Life Source and our donors and all the people involved. So thank you, Bill, Steph, for your volunteer efforts, to all of the donor families and uh, to the, all the folks at Life Source and that great work. I want to thank you all for taking time out of your busy lives and busy schedules to join us for this very important event this morning. If you feel so inspired from this event, go online to donatelife.net. Again, donatelife.net to learn more about how you can help. And now, for the culmination of our event, the flag raising. If our speakers would come forward, please.